Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about sewing machine maintenance. This is actually a question I get asked rather frequently um, via email, and I, I even just had a friend ask me the other day if I would film a video on this, and I said, sure, that's a great idea for a topic. So I'm just going to go over kind of what I do with my machine, how I remember to do it, um, and even the little tools that I use to keep my machine running in top notch. I do take it in yearly to get it cleaned. That's about the only thing I've ever had to do with my machine um, other than these ma little maintenance procedures that I do throughout the year. So we'll head over to the machine and let's get started. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what I do on a regular basis to keep my machine running smoothly. And first of all, I'm going to tell you how I know when it's time to do it. I keep this bobbin with all of my pre-filled bobbins. And um, these are kind of like the darker colors that I use most frequently. But this section right here are my off-white and lighter bobbins. And so I know when I get five that are empty, that it's time to do my machine. So I do it every five bobbins. So, so I can tell that, and, and I should have actually done it. I put another one in there the other day because I knew I was gonna film this video. So I actually should have done this a couple days ago. But when I have the five bobbins that are empty, I know that it's time to take care of my machine and give her her little service. So what I do first is, um, take off the plate and remove my bobbin. Um, and then I just use the little screwdriver to take the plate off. And you know, this is how most of the Janomis work. If you have a different machine, then of course, your bobbin access might be in the front or somewhere else. But um, so what you'll want to do is take off the plate so that you can get to your bobbin. Okay, so then you're going to pull the plate off and you're going to notice that you see some dust there. Um, you can see all the lint um, inside. And then what you're going to do is pull out the bobbin case and you're going to see lint on it as well. And, but you're going to see a lot of lint inside the case. And so I'm going to show you what I use to get that lint out. So I have this little tool that I use to get the lint out. I've also used a Q-tip in the past, but I feel like the fibers from the Q-tip might actually um, get in there. And so I will try to link these. Um, I bought them from United Notions, Moda. Um, so I'll try to find a source to link these little tubes. They are just... They're bendable, so you can get them in there, and they have a little tip. And so I just take that tip, and you can, you can tell I've been sewing a lot lately, so this is more lint than I normally, um, than I normally pull out. And I just kind of go through and pull out all the lint, but then I also get in all of these surrounding areas and pull as much of the lint out as I can. And back in here, you know, sometimes it comes out in big pieces. So, and like I mentioned, I, I did go a little bit longer than normal because I knew I was gonna film this video. So um, it's not usually this bad. And there's a few places I wanna show you that you wanna be sure and get. And that's to run right down in the feed dogs. Make sure there's no lint in there. Sometimes it's just a little bit, but if you let it go for a while, it can really build up. And I just kind of, um, you know, keep messing with it, getting everything I can with my little tool. Then I also have this little kit I got from Fat Quarter Shop. It's a brush and cloth set. And it has two brushes and a microfiber cloth. And I'll have to look and see if these are still available as well too. But I like 
um, this brush because it has the long, um, you know, little hairs that you can get down even further down into your machine. And I'll just kind of go through, get everything I can with this one. I feel like it reaches a little bit more and just grabs on. Um, once I've gotten everything out that I think I can, this other little brush here, you can kind of dust. And I will actually dust this with this other brush. Um, and sometimes on the top here, in those little niches. And then I'll also dust my bobbin case and get everything out that I can. Okay, and then it's time to um, pack up all this lint and just throw it away. Um, the next thing I do is I'm gonna put just one drop of oil down in the very bottom here. And um, I got this from my sewing machine repair guy. Um, and I like it because it has a spout that comes out. Um, and then I also got this that I take when I travel. And it's called Tooltron. And um, it actually says it's good for fishing and automotive and everything. But I do take this when I travel. Um, because it, it's a nice little size to take. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to put one drop of oil. There, I actually got two drops in there, but um, that's okay. I close this back up. I keep it in the plastic bag so I don't get oil on anything. Okay, so I'm actually going to just take a piece of cotton fabric and kind of dab that because I, I did get like two drops in there and I usually just put one. So that's taken care of. I'm going to put everything back in now. First the bobbin case, and then the plate, which I have turned the wrong way. So make sure you turn that the right way. Um, put those screws in. I see a little place right here that I missed. Okay, something else that you wanna do at this time, and this it makes it so easy to remember, with the five bobbins when they're empty, um, it just makes it a perfect time to also change your needle. Some people tell me, oh, I never change my needle unless it breaks. Um, I have a friend who is really, really good about it. She changes her needle when she starts every new project. Um, I don't always remember to do that, but because of her example, I've actually been a lot better at changing my needle when I um, when I clean out my machine. So, and I use the Schmetz Universal 8012s for just my regular sewing, and actually, I have a, a little can that I put my extra ne my old needles and rotary blades in. Um, so I'm just gonna stick it in that fabric until I can put it in that can. It's good to have a disposal system for your needles and your rotary blades. Um, so I'm just gonna change my needle quickly. And this really prevents a lot of issues with your needle catching on your fabric. Okay, I've got the needle in, so I'm going to rethread it. Put the bobbin back in. I always trim these off too. Um, so there, I'm, I'm done with my little mini service. Now, also in that sewing kit, there's a little microfiber cloth, and you can use that to just kind of clean up the area while you're done. I, I like to do that to make sure there's absolutely no oil, that 
came back on the top of my machine, you can use this to clean your machine and get all the dust off of it. Um, so again, I really do like this little kit and it travels easily. Um, that's kind of what I do. Every time I get the five bobbins empty, I just give my machine her little mini service. I hope you enjoyed this video on the tips and tricks for keeping your machine in top shape in between your yearly cleanings. Um, just a great topic, simple things that you can do to make sure that your machine is running smoothly and running well. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and thanks so much for stopping by.